Okay, so here we go again. Here is another shape. This shape, we're going to kind of look at um, stitching it together. Okay, so first we're going to create some UVs. This time I'm going to use automatic mapping. Um, first, apply the material. Okay, so it turns white. Notice there's no UVs here. And then I will go and create automatic mapping. And then voila, it magically appears. Now, don't be under the impression that automatic mapping works for everything because it certainly does not. Uh, automatic mapping is a very lazy way to do UVs, is very unprofessional sometimes. Uh, we as texture artists look at automatic mapping um, it, as, you know, a completely noob way of doing things. There's no doubt about it. Uh, any senior texture artist will say so. It's, uh, it's just cheap. <laughs> but um, here, let me show you a more professional way to lay this out. Uh, and the reason it, it is so bad is the fact that if you look at these ones and zeros, they don't really line up all that well. Okay. And that leads to texture seams. And texture seams are bad. We want to hide our seams as best we can as texture artists. So let's go to edge. I'm going to highlight this edge and I'm going to use this feature. It's called move and sew. Okay. Okay. I'm going to grab this edge, move and sew. Another one, move and sew. Then I'm going to grab this one, move and sew, and this one and move and sew. Okay, so that's basically how you unwrap a box. And really, if you think about it in real life, if you made a box out of paper, it would look exactly like that. And then you would have to fold it up. I like to stay on the mat, as I said. So I'm going to basically shrink this down. And because I made this texture the way I did, uh, w on the keyboard to move around, by the way. Move over here, rotate and scale. Move ro rotates and scales the UVs, just in case. But uh, you notice how I, when I made this map, it, it fits perfectly. Look at this. Just perfectly when I resize this down. Why is that? Well, it's in the power of two. That's why. So... You notice I made it 128 by 128. And then I upscaled it to 1024 by 1024. Both numbers are in the power of 2. Therefore, uh, they always become a perfect square. And it translates well. So we always use textures that are in the power of 2. Power of 2, again, is 1... Well, let's go way back in time. Way back in time to date, 64 by 64. You know this by 64... Uh, bit um, gaming consoles, okay. Uh, Nintendo 64 bit, 128 by 128, uh, 256 by 256, one, 1024, no, 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024, and 2048 by 2048. And usually I could say that faster if I have more coffee in me, but other than that, yeah, that's those are the those are the rules. So this is automatic mapping. And let's look at some more tools up here. Okay, Let's say I want to um, cut this. Well, if I go to edge, highlight that edge, I can hit the cut tool. Oops. And you have to have the object selected in order to see the UVs. This square is now cut away from the other square. Uh, the problem is, see, I can move this around, but I can't move around the whole ent entire thing. I could if I used the uh, UV shell tool. So now, check this out, I can move the whole shell. Okay, there's another way to do that. Let's just go back to the move tool. And that's how you get off these special tools, you go back to the move tool. There's a quicker way for me, I don't like going up to this button, I like holding control right click to shell
Okay, we already looked at move and sew. Uh, if I grab an edge here, move and sew, it just moves and sews it right into place. Not everything's so easy as that. Sometimes I have to go into edge and just hit sew. So we'll make it so, <laughs> get it, make it so. But uh, here you can go, when you do a so, it just stretches out the one edge to the next. So in other words, when I highlight this edge, it'll bring both of them into the uh, center of that selection based upon averages. So in this case, the average between these two edges is this line right here. So, so sometimes it's easier just to move and sew things. If I put this over here, I do have um, a layout. I don't like using this layout because layout is kind of dumb in a way that you notice now that these are not squared. So therefore, they are kind of texturally bent over here or non-uniformed. So you use that very sparingly. To, to fix that option, you go into polygons, unfold, no, layout, square box. And you say scaling none. And usually I just say all this, none, shape, and none. Close that out. And now you'll find that it still stretches it. Or if you go to just layout, hmm. make sure that I got that down pat. Layout, square box, none, none. This time I'll save the settings. Not that that matters, but it shouldn't. And hit apply. And Highlight all my UVs, apply, and there we go. Now, why did it cast it all over the middle of nowhere? It's because where it says shape, it should have bounding box. So, put it over here, apply it, bam. This time it's not as dumb. It goes into its place, and look, at, it even stretched it to the fact that it, if I had it scaled perfectly, it puts it pretty close to where I want it. So that's a good setting for this. You'll find if you have several shells, you might want to change this to something a little bit higher, like 2048, and that's just the spacing between shells. So it utilizes uh, one shell against the next. Alright, so that is automatic mapping. In the next video, we'll look at cylindrical.